So before anything else, let me introduce to the topical workbook for computer science 2210-0478. This is the workbook one for, for paper one, basically computer systems. And as you can see from the table of contents, I've included questions on each and every subtopic from the syllabus along with the mark scheme. And these are some of the actual questions, actual pages uh, as a preview from the workbook section 1.1, 1.3, 2.2, 3.2, 2, 5.3 cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. This is just to show you a glimpse of what type of questions are included in the workbook. There are many, many, many more questions where these come from and around 18 to 20 to questions on an average are included for each and every topic. A must buy if you want to boost your grade. Similar to the paper one workbook, I have designed a paper workbook for paper two as well. This is for algorithm programming and logic uh, for CIEs either 2210 or 0478 GCE or IGCSE computer science. As you can see, it contains questions on every subsection of the syllabus content for paper two along with the mark scheme so you can understand each and every question each and every um, algorithm these are some of the few pages from the workbook just to give you a glimpse of what type of questions are included as you can see this is 7.1 this is 7.7 8.3 and section 10 boolean logic so um, a lot more questions are included in the workbook a must buy if you want to have a very good score in your Cambridge examination order now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh welcome to another physics lecture so today we are going to start section number 4.4 that is practical electricity So, uh, as you can see, the first subtopic we have in this section is the uses of electricity. You are supposed to know some common uses of electricity, that why electricity is used in uh, homes, like houses, offices, etc. The most common use is uh, for lighting and for that we have something that is that is known as the LED bulbs light emitting diode bulbs that look something like this and they have become very common these days they are about 50 percent more efficient in transferring the energy means electrical energy into light uh, as compared to their predecessors the uh, saver bulbs or the, even before that the normal tungsten fl filament lamps next we have something that is known as fluorescent lamps uh, these are shaped like a uh, long tubular strips they are very long lasting and efficient when one is switched on the uh, inside this tube there is a mercury vap vapor it is charged and it emits invisible ultraviolet radiation when cu current is provided to it. This radiation makes the powder on the inside of the tube uh, light up or glow. Hence some visible form of light is uh, produced. It can be white or it can be colored. It depends what type of powder is used on the inside walls of this fluorescent lamp tube. They are very compact, they are energy saving and uh, they are available to fit straight into normal light sockets. You do not have a need special sockets, you can simply plug them in into your normal household sockets. Then uh, another purpose for electricity is for heating. A heater basically no matter what form it is, it always contains a nichrome wire. Nichrome means a uh, mixture of nickel and chrome an alloy of nickel and chrome wire that uh, when provided with electricity it glows hot it becomes hot they are, these nichrome wires are used in electric stoves electric kettles electric fires etc there are three different types of electrical heaters uh, one is the radiant 
heaters or the heaters consisting of radiant element that reach about 900 degrees celsius at top heat uh, which is transferred to the environment through polished reflectors this is usually uh, used for electrical fires then we have convector type elements which reach up to 450 degrees celsius and they heat the uh, air around them by using convection last but not the least we have uh, storage heaters which consist of he uh, heating element and some clay bricks these clay bricks are heated at night during off peak hours off peak hours are those hours in which the electricity company does not charge you an extra amount for using the electricity and during the day when the electricity rate is high then you use that stored heat energy in those clay bricks in order to provide heat to the household then we have battery chargers basically in a normal circuit a battery is a source of electricity or current to the components of the circuit a charger circuit is opposite of that where you take the electricity from the mains and then provide it to a circuit and then a battery so that it can be uh, recharged or it can compensate for the charge it has lost during usage only 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 put rechargeable batteries in such a circuit otherwise your charger or your battery can blow up your, uh, your battery life can be extended or can be prolonged if you use correct type of charger and you char uh, turn off your charger as soon as the charging is done we have another type of chargers where we use solar panels in order to charge batteries during the day and those batteries with the help of an inverter system are used to power the household during the night when there is no sunlight another use for electricity is running electric motors these are used in many electrical appliances such as vacuum cleaners printers uh, uh, your uh, fans your cars your uh, drill machines your hair dryers etc an electric motor is a component that transfers electric energy into kinetic energy into energy of motion because it spins rapidly and if you want to find out the power of any electrical component then you can simply use the formula p equals to iv and the unit for that would be watts electronic circuits electronic systems are becoming increasingly common in households they consist of electronic components which draw out electric a small current from the mains convert it into dc direct current volt and use it to perform their designated task for example automatic washing machines for example your uh, electronic scales for example your microwave oven etc any electronic system can be considered to have uh, three main parts an input sensor that uh, tells the device uh, when to start operating a processor that overlooks the functionality of the device and an output transducer or an actuator for those of you who are taking computer science as well they would know an actuator is simply a device that turns on and off anything that is connected with it it is it works just like an automatic switch when it receives a signal it turns on the device connected to it and when it again receives a signal it turns off the device that was previously switched on a transducer is basically something that converts electrical energy into a mechanical form or which basically converts energy from one form to another be it mechanical to electrical normally the type of actuators or transducers we have in different operators they convert electrical energy into some uh, mechanical work electrical energy what exactly is electrical energy everyday appliances transfer electrical energy from the mains to other form of energy inside that appliance for example in a heater electric energy is transferred into heat energy inside a light bulb electrical energy is transferred into light energy etc the amount of energy uh, that is transferred by an operator by an appliance depends on 
how long the appliance is switched on for means the time for which you left that appliance on and the power rating of that appliance so that how much power does that appliance require to work power is usually measured in kilowatts per hour one kilowatt iron uses the same amount of energy in one hour as a two kilowatt iron would use in 30 minutes as you can see one kilowatt if one kilowatt is used in one hour then something that uses two kilowatts it would uh, use the same amount of energy in half of the time because you have uh, the, these both are inversely proportional a thousand watt heater uses the same amount of energy in 30 minutes in 30 hours as a 3000 sorry a hundred watt heater uses the same amount of energy in 30 hours as a 3000 watt heater in one hour because they both are 30 times of each other to calculate the electrical energy you can simply apply the formula e equals to v upon t where v is the voltage e is the energy in joules and uh, the uh, the t t depends for time okay well uh, sorry this formula is not correct the formula is supposed to be e energy equals to voltage multiplied by i multiplied by t means volt into current into time in time should be in seconds volt should be in uh, volts v should be in volts and i should be in amperes and this would give you energy in joules Like we discussed before, power of an appliance can be calculated with by P equals to IV, where I is the current and V is the voltage. Calculating charges for electric bill, uh, at times the examiner is going to ask you that uh, deduce how much would running an, an appliance cost by telling you what is its power rating and for how long it was turned on. So remember that electric supply companies charge for the amount of energy they supply. Joule is a very small amount of energy and a larger so a larger unit known as kilowatts per hour is used for billing purposes. A kilowatt hour is the energy used by a one kilowatt appliance in one hour. One kilowatt is per hour is supposed to be 1000 joules per second multiplied by 3600 seconds because in one hour you have 3600 seconds this, this would give you something like uh, 36 uh, not 36 3 million and uh, 600,000 joules or 3.6 mega joules that if you use uh, this much power this much energy if an appliance is using this much energy only then on your electric meter would one unit be counted once you have the energy reading in kilowatt simply multiply it with the amount of time in hours with the given rate okay so first of all you'll, you either the power rating of the dip appliance would be given to you either you'll have to calculate it and then you simply multiply it with for how long this uh, that appliance was running and once you get to know that 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 would basically give you the total amount of energy used by that appliance and uh, once you get to know that you simply multiply it with what is the kilowatt uh, what is the uh, cost for using one kilowatt per hour and you have your answer next we have something that is known as the dangers of electricity most dangerous consequences of electricity are electric shock and electric fire which can even cause death means the electric shock can cause death they are usually caused by damaged insulation overheating or damp conditions what is the meaning of damaged insulation usually electric wires are covered by thin rubber coating if that insulation if that rubber coating is damaged due to any reasons 
then the current carrying conductors uh, can give you a shock if you touch them the rubber insulation uh, can break apart and expose the bare wires from beneath and this would result in electric shock whenever you try to touch them or they can uh, result in serious injury or even death to the user or it can cause a short circuit in the current path by connecting exposed conduct exposed wires together this would result in the wire being heat up and this would start a fire overheating of cables especially thin wires if you are ha if you have connected an appliance with thinner wi thin wires when very large current pass through them they become these conductors become heated and they would produce very high temperature sometimes this can cause the wires to melt away and cause short circuit short circuit basically means that the live and the neutral or the positive or the negative wire would connect together without any insulator in between them without any appliance in between them causing a circuit breakdown or causing a uh, electric spark or uh, um, uh, even flames in the circuit short circuit or overload loading of cables are conditions that lead to such large currents the overheating of cables would result in melting of the insulation and causing fire something like this then we have damp conditions if your body is wet then your body resistance would drastically drop from about 100 kilo ohms to only 100 ohms so if you are sweating if you have just taken a bath or if your hands are simply uh, wet for any reason then this would dr drastically drop the effective resistance of your body if you are in such a condition and you try to touch a uh, electric wire or electric socket you might uh, then uh, your since your body would be having very very low resistance then the current would tend to flow through your body and go inside the, the earth and this would cause severe electric shock and uh, which can cause paralysis or severe burnouts or even death you should not touch electrical mains or electrical wires with wet hands as this would mean a large current would suddenly uh, pass through your body causing a great electric shock another danger of electricity is the excess current from overloading of plugs especially in terms of extension leads single and multi uh, pulse socket if you too much if you uh, if too much load is applied onto a single circuit this it it may become overheated and catch a fire you should always use the correct fuse with every appliance or a plug you'll study about fuse in a while so never attach too many appliances all at once in a single socket with the use of extension wires or extension uh, leads this would cause overloading of the circuit and it would definitely start a fire appliances such as heaters and irons use very large amount of power so never connect them with anything else never use adapters and uh, not adapters extension wires with them and do not plug in any other appliance with them on a single circuit so plus do not use normal wired circuit with them use specially designed circuits which have thicker wires and they can withstand higher currents passing through them so they would not cause a fire these are usually made from clay so they do not get overheated otherwise you can have something like this this is a picture of a burnt out extension socket okay so we'll keep it uh, till here for today I hope you have understood everything if you have any problems feel free to comment them that confusion or problem below and I'll uh, make sure to answer to your queries as soon as possible I'll see you guys in the le next lecture good luck for your paper take care Allah Hafiz